My name is Damon Barlow, and my gamer tag is Karma. I started off playing sports, and it, you know, eventually I hurt my knee, and it just really made me focus on competitive Call of Duty a lot. Winning really means a lot to me in Call of Duty. You know, I do value winning, but I, I really hate losing. I actually have a quote, it's hate losing more than you love winning. And I really do go by that. Three rings, 24 championships. This is the story of Karma. Karma made his professional debut in 2011, placing sixth at the national championship but his breakthrough came in the 2013 season where he signed for Ferrico Impact with Killer, John and Too Quick. Their first tournament together in Chicago yielded a respectable third place finish, but they knew they had to step up their game in order to win big. Enter Parasite and Miracles, two new additions to the team who proved to be just the boost they needed. We are down to our final two teams. They're competing for the MLG Pro Circuit Trophy and the grand prize of $20,000. Got it. Here we there go. Ferrico gets there the return is. and he walks oh, it in. Ferrico. Wow. What an amazing play by Ferrico. Kill is the last one. Unite versus Slack. Unite Slack versus Ferrico Killa. Who is going to take it home? Slack needing to go huge, and he cannot do it. Ferrico is going to be your winter champions. Wow, what a play coming out of Ferrico. Unite gave it everything they had. You can hand it to our MVP, Karma and Ferrico. Give it up for Parasite. Karma, Miracles, and Killa are MLG winter champions. With a fresh lineup, the team embarked on a winning spree winning back-to-back -back tournaments before setting their sights on the inaugural World Championship. But we knew we were putting in the work and like we, we just felt it like we were like yeah something good's about to happen. Rico is one yep. round away from winning the championship. There you see Killa's car, that was not Parasite, so Parasite still has an RC car as well. Bomb is down oh, for Ferrico, he gets out of there, able to dodge it, and then gets taken oh, out, down. jumping on with Miracles. It's a 4v2 situation, Envy has to win this round in order to stay in it. Miracles One, picks, up, two. picks up two, Big makes play. it a 2v2, gets taken out by Stainville, just Killa alive. It's a 1v1, Proofy versus Killa. The bomb is down for Ferrico, shots fired. Killa trying to desperately take out Proofy. Proofy has away. to go out and defuse it. Killer gonna draw him out. Shoot him. Oh, so close so to a weak. championship. It's all hanging on this one kill. 12 seconds left on the clock. Proofy has to go back. Killer's gonna have to chase Proofy. Proofy has to go for the defuse He's here. He's done it. He's gonna get it. He's gonna get it. He does it. We have a real champion. championship. Amazing. Amazing. You guys have had an amazing run. You deserve it. You are the best Call of Duty team in the world. Congratulations. For Eco Impact, champions of the world. If there was an MVP award given out, Karma would definitely have won it. People still bring up, well, we were all in school, blah, blah, blah. I was like, even if I was still in high school, I was still gonna be mopping you. Like, there, yeah. there was no difference. No. Like, Known today for his selfless play, early years Karma was a true stud on the map and a fearsome slayer. Another victory followed at UMG St. Louis, and it was now four tournament victories in a row. Impact looked unstoppable, but little did they know their reign was about to come to a swift end. Just seven more seconds for complexity. Aches on a six kill spree. Two, one, boom! Three seconds. Crim six and Aches have the front unlocked. TP watching the flank. One kill hey, right now. Crim is gonna do it. That is it. Complexity takes out Impact! Complacency began to set in, and a new challenger emerged in the form of Complexity, who brought in Clayster to replace Too Quick. In a stunning upset, Complexity dismantled Impact in the grand finals of MLG Anaheim. We're giving it to them, man. Like, we don't, we don't give a damn. Yeah. Um, and I realized that at, at the Gfinity. But no, Complexity keeps flooding the old Clayster and friends. All they need to they do need is to kill. Five seconds, it's not going to happen. Oh my goodness. That is going to be Complexity. Oh my god. Complexity celebrates. And there we will see Impact getting knocked out of a tournament by Complexity once again. 
Impact were knocked out again by complexity at Gfinity 1, and Karma decided it was time to move on. Things moved quickly back then, and Team Envy was the destination. But Karma's first event for the organization wasn't how he envisioned it. You love for this! Karma, you are nervous! I seen you get nervous, boy! I seen it! I seen it! Who can't anchor, Damon? Who can't anchor? Zip him up! They placed only top 16 at UMG Atlanta, his worst placement for nearly two years. But things improved quickly for Envy at Gfinity 2, especially for Karma individually. In a group play match against Enigma, Karma went on a 28 kill streak, a record that has still not been broken to this day. Still in there, Karma picking up another kill. The man is going off. He's on a nine streak at the moment, and somebody stop him. This is the Karma we know and love in the double digits now on this streak. Doesn't connect on the first one, switches out for the Scorpion, and here comes the damage. Karma <laughs> on a 15, make it 16 kill spree. Going huge for Envy, showing that he is still wanting to be considered the best player in Black Ops 2. That is a ridiculous guy. You cannot allow a guy to go on a 70s, 18 kill streak. What is he? That is, is he, he's doubled up on the war machine. What a ridiculous! This is 30 How? straight kills for Envy without anyone oh, from Enigma God. fighting back. This is just oh. getting bloody. 23 How? kill streak. This is somebody, the biggest somebody streak we have stop ever this seen. Man. It's going to take someone pulling his power cord out at the moment to stop him as nothing seems to be hitting Karma as he takes down another two. If this was a pub, he would have a swarm right now. 25 straight kills without dying from are Karma. You, are you serious? Who puts that kind of... This is an international champion of the best teams in the world and he's making it seem like these guys don't even have hands. What is he doing? Dropping down the Hellstorm, still has the lightning strike, still has the war machine. He's about to double... That's the only reason he called the Hellstorm. <laughs> Another lightning strike, his third oh. Hellstorm, and he's... But this wouldn't be the only memorable play he made in London. In a bracket play match against his former teammates, Karma made one of the ballsiest plays ever showing why everyone regards him as the clutchest player in history. Don't oh, so miss out what you mean. Please, please, pl <laughs> No! <laughs> no! Karma, Karma, please do it to him. Please do it to him. Please do it to him. There's three of them. They're all inside the generator. Karma, go for the ninja defuse. 45% of the way through. No, we're chicken no, the bomb. No. Karma, yes! Oh, I get the ninja defuse! Oh, my Karma! Ridiculous. What have we just seen? <laughs> the confidence. The confidence to oh, do that at this stage my. in the tournament. Ultimately though, Karma failed to win an event with Envy or even reach a grand final. A tough ending to a season in which he was definitely the MVP. I wish I never joined Envy. It was like, it was a good decision at the time, but like if I wanted to win, it, it was bad. Like if we got our shit together and I never left Frico, I think it would have been a, it would have been a crazier year than it was. Going into the Call of Duty Ghost season, Karma was hoping this was a fresh start for the team, after they failed to win in the previous year. However, things did not start well, as they only placed top 6 at the first event in Columbus. Karma was slowly starting to lose hope on Envy and desperately needed a lifeline, and it came in the most unexpected way. Complexity made a change. The first choice for Complexity to replace Clay was none other than Karma. This was the opportunity he had been waiting for, and in his debut event, Karma showed exactly why Complexity picked him up, as he made one of the plays of the season to win UMG Philadelphia. As champs beckoned, Karma had one thing on his mind become the first ever player to win back-to-back -back world championships. Into the lower bracket. Fantastic stuff from them. 31-point lead right now. Are we going to end the thing? Did Karma just do that? No, oh, oh no, done, please! Karma, no! Done, oh, my God, thank you. By complexity, they get the early flag lead. Let's see how far they can pull away. Well, the three plays do go down. It's going to be down to Karma, last year's world champion, to just stay alive for a little bit. Karma's going to get two wow. kills there. Fantastic, can he find the third? So, it's, look, it's either Karma that's going to be the second time they've won a million-dollar tournament, or it's going to be Merc for the second time they've won a million-dollar tournament. So awesome. That's, yeah, At that's just awesome. 20 One of these guys old. will. Yeah, One of these guys under 21, and they're about... 
to win their second million dollar tournament. We'll grab another flag here to pad the stats at the end. Final five seconds. This one is over. TP, the OBJ continuing to go positive. Karma going even. Crim six plus three at 15 and 12, but no one better than Aix in that game. 18 kills on the first. Does he see the player up top? Great shots from Aix. Gonna clean that up before Krim can even fire. Study, one on four. Complexity, one kill away from going up 2-0 here. And Study, he's not, not letting it happen yet. It's a 4v1, he's able to pick up Aix. Let's see if he can do something miraculous uh -oh. for this enemy squad, and he's not able to do it. And Complexity pulls out game number two. They are one game away. As well to his advantage. Two players to beat. The defense too strong. I told you look oh, out for Karma. Karma. And Karma is making Rain know this is my base. Get out, son. Went down here, but ultimately Complexity is going to be able to pull it out. And they are going to be crowned your 2014 world champion winners here. Complexity were champions of the world. And Karma was now a two-time world champion. But the success didn't stop there. They won the season one playoffs one month later, a tournament in which Karma stepped up in the final map of the grand finals, going 10 in one to take down Strictly Business. Player in the back picks him up. Oh. Nice headshot by Karma. That was absolutely disgusting. Hard by going around the corner methodically, picking up another kill, and he may get the three piece. Fire Alley, and he may have a conversation with Karma right now, and a big win and complexity. Game five, the grand finals are up 4-0 there. Jeez, this is insane play right here. You see Dino coming in bottom red. Get shots going down. And, and that is going to do it. Complexity. Complexity are your 2014 season one playoff champions here at PAX. Another win came at UGC Niagara, and Karma again made the headlines for this 1v2 clutch against Optic Gaming. Karma's going to be missed, but just by a little bit here. Oh, oh connects with the headshot, and now it's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. He does have the pistol, and oh, he's going to challenge. He's going to push out there, and oh, oh my god, Karma did it! Oh, Karma with the clutch, a big play there out of him, coming out of the dock. Optic did get revenge at the X Games Invitational, which was the first major tournament loss for this team. Another loss, though, followed at Gfinity 3, their worst placement all season. Tensions were beginning to rise as they became evil geniuses. And finally, the team imploded. Roster mania following UMG. EG doesn't even go to the event, yet they're the first to start the roster mania as Karma announces he doesn't want to play for the team. On August 27th, 2014, Karma announced he no longer wanted to play for the team. He had opted not to attend an ESL Gamescom multiplayer reveal land for Advanced Warfare in order to be present for the birth of his daughter, Bella, and believed the team was planning to drop him permanently as a result. It seems there was some miscommunication in play, but the damage was done and Karma was gone. Like, I don't want to play with them anymore. Like, the fact that they thought I would actually do that was, I was just like, it's a no-brainer. Like, I'm yeah. not playing with them. Yeah. I don't care how bad they want it. After four tournament wins and a world championship, Karma said goodbye to the dynasty. He was loaned to FaZe for the rest of the season and had one thing on his mind. Prove to his old team that he is more than capable of winning without them. And at the next event, he did exactly that. It's sounding like it's a roller coaster about oh to happen. Oh my god, it's getting crazy here. Yeah, Only 20 and seconds Karma, he hits the snipe. snipe. On to Zuma. Apathy takes out Study. We are going to have one player on bomb. It is 4v2 right now. It looks like Denial is going to get bombed down. That is replays on bomb. You're going to have Saints watching the cross. Karma takes out bomb player. All up to Saints to force this one for a win. And, and Karma it. snipes. Saints, FaZe is your UMG National Elgato 25k champions. FaZe took the crown at UMG Nashville, the first major victory in their organization's history. From winning his second world championship to becoming a father, 2014 was a season to remember for Karma. As Karma's contract with Evil Geniuses came to an end, he found himself at a crossroads in his career but then came an unexpected offer from Optic Gaming to play for their sister team, Optic Nation. Yes, a step down in terms of prestige, but Akama saw this as an opportunity to prove himself yet again and accepted the deal. At the North American Regional Finals, he was reunited with old Fariko teammates Killer and Miracles and managed to carry his team to victory and secure a spot at champs. 
Karma was the only player with a positive KD ratio on his team that event and needed his team to step up big time if he wanted any chance of going 3 for 3. But when the World Championship did arrive, Karma's team still couldn't find their footing. They crashed out in 12th place and Karma still posted though the 4th highest KD ratio in the tournament. 20 seconds remaining on this half point. Envious are not really anywhere near at the moment. Karma has some work to do here. Picks up one after that previous one. I think he's probably going to shun the battle. It's a great work by Karma. His movement is sublime from Karma. A kill gets dropped by Nameless. Karma down to 1v2 situation. One top blue. The other one just on the outside there. An elbow. He pushes on in. Karma picks up one. Now to 1v1. Gets it for Owen. And Owen get themselves an SMB. But as fortune would have it, just a few matches later, Optic Gaming were knocked out in seventh place and questions were starting to be raised about a potential roster change. The fans finally got their answer on the 4th of April, as Nature announced he would be taking a break from competitive Call of Duty. Promoting Karma to the main roster was a no-brainer for Optic, with how well Karma was performing throughout the season. All right, well, they've got a couple kills. They are so close to putting pressure into the base base. You've got them spawning out of green. They've got to get forward, trying to control the base. Oh, oh my God! God! I think Karma with oh the four my. face. He is absolutely a monster. And that is going to be that. Optic Gaming back-to-back -back X Games gold medalists. Karma helped Optic win a further four tournaments, cementing them as the best team in 2015. At the final tournament of the season, Karma made one of the most jaw-dropping clutches in COD history to go out with a bang. That front player at green. Yes, he does. He's able to catch Saints now. Stuck in a 1v1. Him and Octane in this oh battle. Oh my god, the quick scope. Oh my gosh, Karma with the flashy plays. Unstoppable. <laughs> We've seen this for years from the guy. After COD champs, they pick up the two-time world champ and they never look back. That truly is no doubt when it comes down to which team dominated this year. Optic's dominance continued over to Black Ops 3. The first major was Stage 1 playoffs, with Rise Nation going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Green Wall. The series went all the way to a Game 7, Round 11, Infection Search and Destroy. With the fate of the tournament on the line, Karma got the all-important double kill to win them the game and lift the trophy. On a long flank, they didn't have success challenging from the mid-map, but potentially pushing from the defensive side of things could break this setup. That's another one. It's four versus two. They're able to pick up one kill. All of a sudden, 2v2. They're picking him up. It's now four down. Optic Gaming has done it. They go huge. Karma in the final round picks up two big kills. He finishes nine and seven in game seven. But I tell you what, if anyone had any doubts about Rise Nation, they are over now. They played unbelievable. But that wasn't the end of their success. Optic went on to win both open events, with Karma continuing to shine as one of the most clutch players in the game. At MLG Orlando, he showed exactly why he's so valuable to the team. In a pool play game against Kingsman, he clutched two 1v3 situations to secure them the win. Heat wave, heat wave, he has heat wave, this is possible now. Please, please, my heart, my heart, one, I can't three. handle this. Parasite, Parasite doesn't spot him. I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if they have any idea what's going on. Be Parasite now. On the other oh my the god! Team. Oh, and he's, he's Karma, keeping the bags! Just pulls off the team. impossible. Karma, 1v2, not again. He's one, cuts him down, no. one versus one. This is for everything, another 1v3 opportunity for Karma. 28 seconds left. Mox does have active camo. He's gonna blind pop it, and you hate this type of play. And he gets this position. Oh, talk about panicking on the main stage. 1v1. Karma. Mox. Everything on the line. Karma peeks out. Oh he gets the kill. Karma, you're the best Karma. ever. And in the winners' final against Elevate, he had two incredible uplink interceptions to complete a 3-0 sweep. One point throw off. You see, Vicento's gonna pop his teammate. Don't know if he even connected with anybody. Karma. Big play by Karma. I feel like time and time again, Jack, we talk about Karma making big plays in uplink. And so leading the charge. Heat wave gets popped. Scuff now dead. He's gonna go ahead, set up the one interception again! Karma again with a huge play in uplink. They'll Saves reset the it. It's done. The gaming. They it's reset done. it. It is over. 
It was plays like these that earned Karma the MVP award for the event, even though he had the lowest KD ratio on his team. His successful transition from main slayer to objective player, which doesn't always show up on the scoreboard, was a testament to his dedication to do whatever it takes to win. But in the lead up to champs, his frustrations with his teammates began to grow. He felt that they weren't playing the objective enough, and he knew that they needed to step up their game if they wanted to win the biggest tournament of the year. Right there, uh, we just we just called to rap, and I'm pushed up, and I had to go back and grab the fucking ball again. I'm sick of fucking doing that. At the World Championship itself, Optic looked like a shadow of their peak performance. In a shocking turn of events, they were defeated by complexity in a pool play match, and placed second in their group. This meant they had to play Envy in their first winner's bracket game, and despite beating them in the finals of the most recent event, it was Envy who emerged victorious this time around. This put Optic to the loser's bracket, and the team was left reeling from the unexpected defeat. But the misery did not end there. Optic Gaming were unable to turn things around against Cloud9, and were eliminated in 7th place for the second year in a row by Karma's former teammate Patrick Aikes Price. I almost think we wore ourselves out through the year. We played so much leading up to every event, and it just it wasn't the same going into that event. I, I don't know if we were worn out or not, but like, I mean, you spend eight months playing literally every day, eight hours a day, and then you get to that point near the end of the game. Optic started the Infinite Warfare season out slow again, placing top six at CWL Vegas. At the next event in Atlanta, Optic were on the verge of losing to amateur team at Panda Gaming to place top 8, which would have tied their worst ever placing. Down 5-2 in Game 5, fans were preparing for the worst. A loss here would definitely have been the final nail in the coffin for this Optic team. But in one of the most crucial moments in competitive Call of Duty history, Optic clawed their way back into a Game 5 Round 11 and it all came down to Karma, a one versus one against Fastballer to keep Optic alive in the tournament. Let's see how this one does play out. It's all down to a one versus one, Karma versus Fastballer, no payloads, the camo was already used, the bomb is down on middle map. Karma, he's smelling blood, he's checking his corners, Fastballer hugging this one though, and just as he looks away, oh my goodness. Karma has no idea where he's at. The players Neither just, of these players have a read on each other. They just ran right side by side. The bomb is gonna go down. Things are looking good for Optic Gaming right now. The Scarab can come into play as well. Probably not the best thing to use in a one versus one. Fastball immediately rotating through that middle map area. We could have a gunfight coming down here to the side. Is it Fastball spot Karma? That is the question. Oh, look. Karma's gonna be right on the other side of the wall. We can see it through X-ray. My heart is racing and Karma there is, is gonna come out on top and take out Fastball eliminating Panda Gaming. Karma clutched the 1v1, and suddenly, Optic found their groove. They ended up second, a respectable result in Atlanta, but they knew they could do better, and they still had that winning potential. The momentum carried over to the next two tournaments. At CWL Paris, they defeated old rivals FaZe in the Grand Finals in a dominating fashion. A map where typically Optic Gaming will rock two enemy fours, one from Karma and Crit 6. It doesn't matter what Karma uses right now, this guy is lights out! Eight and oh, and he's pre firing at. What is he doing? Get, back up the ground. Map, get in there. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's insane to see Optic Gaming now back on top. And one month later at CWL Dallas, Optic had the chance to get revenge on E United, the team that beat them at CWL Atlanta. The stage was set for an epic showdown. Optic Gaming, E United, the majority of the $200,000 prize pool. The grand final starts right now. And you're going to see it's Karma, last man standing as Crim6 falls at the hands of Gunless. Arsenis gets burned. Karma's going to decide to use this camo, and he's going for Gunless, who's on the defuse. No one saw him coming. Karma bought him enough time. It's Optic Gaming's Karma playing insane right now. Best play I have seen this tournament, Matt. This has been the greatest grand finals we have seen in competitive Call of Duty going all the way to game five in the first set. E United clutching up, reverse sweeping Optic Gaming. Now we see the second game five. This one decides who raises the trophy. Two on two, Silly and Arsenis up against Formal and Karma. And RC is going to get one. Karma gonna stay alive. It's a 1v1 now. Karma. And Karma's able to win it. 
just when you thought E United was going to put a round on the board, Karma clutches up, wins the 1v2. Trying to bait out some shots, looking for a first challenger. There it is. He's going to punish Pristini. Find Silly as well. Karma, 6 and 1 at this point. Make it 7 and 1. He's looking for the ace on Arsene. And there it is. Well, it's going to be hard now because they have the players going into observation deck. And here's the camera play I was talking about from Karma. He's going to be able to get Pristini. He oh, picks no. up a second as well. Gets fully streaked out. Optic Gaming what? running through E United here. This is out. Silly is gone. Just the twins left. Down goes Arsene. Down goes Pristini. It's all Optic Gaming. Karma with a ridiculous final performance. And look, they hand him the trophy right away. In the first game five, he was incredible. They end up losing it. As the pressure mounted and the stakes grew higher, Karma again rose to the occasion, putting on a masterclass in game 10, going 12 and one to carry his team to a resounding 6-0 victory and the championship. As the season progressed though, Optic struggled to maintain their form, failing to make a grand final in the next two tournaments, leaving fans worried about their chances at champs. However, Optic bounced back in a big way, winning the Stage 2 playoffs by taking down Envy in two best of fives. This win gave them the momentum they needed to head into the biggest event of the year with confidence. Optic Gaming were knocked down to the loser's bracket by Envy for the second year running. The team was left stunned after being so confident that this would finally be their chance to win. But they didn't give up yet and won their losers final match to set up a rematch with Envy in the grand finals. It was a daunting task though as they would need not just one but two best of five series wins to be crowned champions. We did lose in winners finals and that's probably the only time I I think we all were like what the hell just happened like yeah. we all I don't know how we just lost like that. But I just, I mean, yeah, I, that was a huge turning point. The history between these two squads, Matt, you've been here for so yeah. many of them. Optic have never beaten Envy at a Call of Duty ch World Championship, and now they have to do it twice in a row to win the title. He's in. He's behind. Two kills to Envy, but Scum and Formal there to trade it out. Karma, Scum, Formal, they clear house. Series one goes to Optic Gaming. as we're going to a second best of five. Hunting for that first ring, doing what he can here to keep Envy players coming off a of spawn. No ground given now as Karma finds another two piece. Here's the overdrive. Bob, is he just trying to back him up? Make it all the plays, it's Grim Six. The curse has been broken. After an intense battle, Optic emerged victorious as world champions at last. For Karma, this victory was especially sweet. His third world championship under his belt, unprecedented at the time and still remarkable today, which he celebrated with his daughter. He even revealed his commitment in and out of the server with a detailed notebook of strats and ideas that helped Optic finally achieve their elusive ring. Following their champs' victory, Optic started the 2018 season off slowly, with the transition from jetpack gameplay to boots on the ground proving tricky for them. They could do no better than third place in the first four tournaments, and fans were getting worried. They weren't accustomed to Optic being winless for such a long period. But at the Stage 1 playoffs, Optic found their groove again, and made it all the way to the grand finals. Just one map away from victory, Optic took a 5-2 lead on London Docks and the championship was in their grasp. But in a reverse of the Karma vs Fastballer 1v1 situation, Optic this time collapsed in a heartbreaking turn of events for the Green Wall, losing the series in one of the greatest grand finals chokes of all time. After nearly three and a half years of dominance, Optic decided it was finally time to make a roster change and break up the dynasty. On May the 6th, Optic announced they'd signed Octane and Methods, with Karma and Formal kicked out of the starting team. 
Anderson. This is a three-time world champ who has been used as a complete and utter scapegoat. Simple as that. As of right now, I feel like uh, the way Karma has kind of been treated so far isn't fair considering his stature. Karma was always the easy scapegoat for fans whenever Optic failed to win, and his time had finally come. Following this decision, Karma decided to sit out the rest of the season instead of searching for another alternative. As the Black Ops 4 season approached, Karma was ready to make his return to competition, with multiple teams wanting to sign the three-time champ. But Karma decided to run it back with Optic, who wanted him to return to the roster after suffering their worst champs placing of all time. CWL Vegas was first up. There's that first kill, Karma finds another one, now a two versus two, G2 are split. TJ and Karma, they gotta go. get it done. They have to try and get in. The final seconds are here. Chino comes soaring in. Chino can't win the gunfight. One on one. One on one. And the three time gets it done. Takes the gunfight in there. There is the 3 0 for Optic. But we're the side of LG. They've held on to this for the most part. Plus, that's Karma's, but that picks him up streaks as well. He's got seven in a row, 15 and 10. Karma's starting to go off right now as he is taking over the game. The Karma chance starting the venue. This is Optic even will keep that strap time still about a you no know, 60 point lead. Nice shots by Karma starting to heat on up, finds two. And that's on the formal as X teammate. After a year of pain, here it is. There it is. Optic Gaming back on top. Optic Gaming were champions again. After going the entirety of 2018 without a championship, their decision to bring back Karma proved to be the correct one, and Crim6 admitted live on stage they regretted their decision to drop him initially. And then Damon, thank you. Thank you for coming back. We're nothing without you. <laughs> but Optic's momentum was halted after star player Dashi was unable to play in the first Pro League split due to visa issues. They placed third at CWL London, third at Anaheim, and again third at the World Championship. In a season which started out looking so promising, Optic were frustrated to end the season with only one Grand Finals appearance. Once again, Karma found himself in a tough situation in the offseason, being in the dark about whether he'd still play for Optic going into franchising. But he soon found out that Optic would be parting ways with both himself and Crim6, with Optic moving to different ownership and the Chicago Huntsman with Scumb and Hex arriving to the CDL's inaugural season at the very last minute. But both himself and Crim6 were unable to join the same franchise, and on October the 21st, the Seattle Surge officially announced the signing of Karma. Their season though started off rough, winning just two out of their opening eight matches. It was clear this team just didn't mesh well, but with every player rumoured to have signed a massive contract deal, management preferred to let the team work things out. And things went from bad to worse with the onset of the pandemic, with the rest of the season being played online. This was ultimately the final straw for Karma, and competing in Call of Duty was simply no longer enjoyable for him. On the 4th of June 2020, Seattle Surge announced that Karma had chosen to retire from competitive play. Arguably taken too soon by Joe Seacott and the declining quality of Call of Duty titles, Karma is fondly remembered by the competitive scene, and thankfully makes regular appearances on Skump's watch party, and has also repeatedly teased a return as either a competitor or coach Roptic at some point in the future. The first three-time world champion, the only to do so all on LAN, and arguably the most clutch player, the most selfless player, and one of the smartest players to ever grace the sticks. He created a legacy on and off the server, juggling his in-game success with building a family. Damon Karma Barlow, one of the greatest to ever play the game. 